All right, if you just watched the last video, level five, it talked about the BAS DDC controller. Uh, quick overview, and then this one, this lesson, we're starting to get into a little more of the programming. Uh, so, programs vary from a simple on off control to a complex multiple tier subroutine, right? It all depends on the, the sequence of operations. Um, again, we're focusing on Niagara N4. So what I'm most familiar with, but you know, there's other systems out there that are great or just as good, maybe better, but uh, that's what we're focused on, right? As always, key terms, pause, look these over. Uh, we talked about bog file in the last one. Talked about a palette, I believe, uh, the platform, the Niagara flat platform. So the sequence of operation, right? This is a, a prerequisite of all programs. The, the two questions that you need to answer, what exactly do I need to do? And how specifically am I going to do this? Um, so you need to know exactly and specifically, right? These are the most important things. Uh, when you start to skip over details, that's when this programming gets really, uh, you get into trouble, right? If you, if you miss one little step or you jump over a detail, you get in a lot of trouble. Uh, so the, the sequence of operations, sometimes it's abbreviated as SOO. This is critical, right? This, this is what tells the path of inputs and outputs to do. If thermostat says 70 degrees, turn the VFD up or down to allow cool or hot air, right? Simple SOO. So I just gave you a simple one. This gets into it a little bit deeper. So I'll pause it. You can read through this if you want. But essentially, it's you know, thermostat has a set point. What happens if it goes below that? What happens if it goes above that? So here you can actually see a sequence of operation that I pulled off of a blueprint. Right? This is what you're going to see in the corner of a blueprint. It's going to have the sequence of operation for the facility or for an actual device, let's say a chiller, what happens if the input says this? It's going to tell the chiller to do something. So logic flow, what goes in must come out, right? We all, we've all heard that one. So the input feeds into logic, logic figures it all out, spits it to an output. And so there's a couple different programming methodologies, there's lines, ladders, objects. This kind of gets into the differences. So line programming, uh, this is kind of code, right? It's line by line. There's a, a, an industrial basic. Uh, you can see here, it's coding. This would be an example of a line programming. Doesn't make sense to me, but uh, you know, this is a way to program. The biggest advantage is that it's short, it gets right to the point. It contains only the information that is essential. The biggest disadvantage is that it's hard to understand. It's hard to look at it, it's hard to speak at it. Um, you know, we don't think or speak in this language, right? And so uh, you gotta be really good with it and it, it does take time to learn. The next one is ladder programming. And so here's a, a good example. Uh, my background is electrical, so this makes a little more sense. Uh, it kind of looks like a parallel circuit in electrical uh, code. So the advantages here are spelled out in this box. It's a little easier to visualize than line programming. It's easier to learn than line programming. Some of the disadvantages, um, some of the larger programs or uh, you know the programming that you're doing has to be se segmented because it becomes too big, right? You have to cut it into chunks. Uh, and then it can be, you know, di harder or more difficult to incorporate analog and text strings into the program. And then the last one is object methodology. And so this is the most widely accepted method of programming DDC controllers. Uh, this is the way that it's done in Niagara and 4. Uh, this is as you've seen in the last video and hopefully we'll show you in this video. It, it, it uses objects that have been predetermined by you or your facility and you're, you're using the wire sheet in uh, Workbench to program this. So the advantages here, it's extremely flexible and powerful. 
It's easier to learn, requires less new language skills, easy to cut and paste, right? And you can actually organize large programs into subroutines. So the disadvantages, you can see um, the microprocessor or the memory, uh, this is going to put an intensive demand on it. And uh, another thing is it's not universal, right? So if you go into a site, you may not be able to use Niagara for unless you update the controller, right? Where usually line or ladder programming would work, potentially. And then this is kind of the key for me. It, uh, the disadvantage is the programming is not uniform, right? In line programming, you tell exactly what to do, exactly how to do it. In this methodology, you might have one company that does it one way, another company that does it another way. And so it's very uh, flexible. So that can be good or bad. And this is, this uh, area would put it as a disadvantage. So you may remember this. We talked about the different types of points in DDC programming. So you got Boolean, digital binary points, enumerated, multi-state orange, numeric, this is an analog, purple variable points, and then the point string. This is a text, usually, or it's gray. Uh, start to spell out some of the different objects or the points. You got read-only versus writable point, the logic objects, the math objects, the HVAC objects. A little bigger picture of this is so on the wire sheet, uh, you, you've probably seen that there is an in and an out slot, right? Uh, the last video we showed you on a wire sheet, the in and out slot, some of the outs fed into some of the ins, right? And so it's easy to link them. And this is a program link. Another uh, term that's used a lot is a facet. And so the slot on most objects exists slow, solely for the purpose of information and clarification of the data being output. And so this can be information to the user, such as F for Fahrenheit degrees, HZ for Hertz. Um, you can limit the number of digits behind the decimal point. So you, you don't want to see 76.4449 degrees, you want to see 76.4, right? Um, convert different things. So it makes it easier and more pleasing to the human eye. We can understand it. So the program, this puts it all together, right? The programmer and the programming is what makes it all work. And there's, there's different inputs, outputs, there's different logic, right? There's different sequence of operations. And so this entire process is all strung together. Eventually we have a working product. If we don't, there's a lot of troubleshooting involved. The most basic digital program, right? Uh, you turn a switch up and an overhead light turns on. Right? You turn it off, the light turns off. The most analog program uh, would be a volume control on a radio. You turn it up, the volume gets loud. You turn it down, the volume gets quiet, right? So with that, let's dive into the computer. And looking at a sequence of operation, right? Um, here we have a basic sequence of op operation, right? The heating set point is at 70. If it drops below 69, we're going to turn the digital output 1 on. If it rises above 71, the digital output 1 turns off. And so input number 1 is the room temperature. Input number 2 is the set point. The logic is the heating thermostat. And the output digital output one, right? So give you a quick overview. Uh, again, this is the IO34 module. This is where the HVAC logic is residing. And so what inputs on the computer is this feeding to? Room temperature, analog input eight. The output, 73.2, is feeding into the logic. Here you can see. And then that's feeding out to digital output. Heat element digital output 4. So you can see our set point is 76 degrees. And this is feeding into the set point. The differential, we got 3 degrees difference. And the action. What is it going to do? So you can start to understand how the object mythology works. 
You can see over here, this is the large uh, overview. And then if we scroll down, we can see some of the uh, different programming. We got the purple. Right? That's a numeric. It's an analog variable point. Right? So the room temperature is a variable numeric point. What is the green? The green is a Boolean. This is a digital binary point. And then you got the gray. These are point string, text. These are numeric, but they're point strings, right? Okay, so now we're going to dive into palettes. We briefly talked about them. If I open here and I go palette, oops, I opened two palettes. So we've got a palette here, right? We're going to open a palette. We go kick control. So here you can see we just opened a whole palette. We're going to ex expand control palette, and then we're going to expand points. So here's all our different points. Now let's go back out and go to the logic. So you can see the logic folder. We have and, equal, greater than, less than, right? And is only when all inputs are true, or input that is true will cause output to be true. Close that. Look at the math, basic math, right? The average, the maximum. Uh, you might use different uh, math functions. Let's close that. We can look at the HVAC. So you can have some different uh, objects, right? T stat. We all know what the T stat is. So double click that, you're going to see uh, a typical T stat object. So now let's look at a motor start logic. So this is a, the program for the motor start and stop. So again, you have an object that has an in and out. These are the program link slots, right? The in slot and the out slot. And you're going to link vital information to each object so that it can perform its job. So the output is feeding to the input here, the pilot relay. Feedback value is going to the output here. Again, this is a large wire sheet, so if we scroll down, you can see some other links here. Scroll back up. And so on the system here, I'm going to turn digital input 2 on, and you just saw on the wire sheet that it turned on. I turn it off, it turns off. When I turn it on, you can see here the pilot relay coil. I'm going to click Run Enable. If I turn it off, it goes into Standby. So that would constitute a basic digital input and output, right? Now let's look at an analog program. Let's say we want to do volts to a percentage conversion. So a basic analog program, volts to percentage conversion, right? Uh, we got the wire sheet up here. We got actuator positive feedback. And so if we change this dial, Right, we can see the voltage here. And then the Belimo is going to actually start to open up, and you can see the actuator feedback is going up right here. Seven, eight, nine. So we're doing uh, we're converting volts to a percentage. So that's using a, a math function, right, to convert the volts to a percentage. All right, there you have it. Uh, next lesson has been completed. Um, we didn't dive super into the programming, but I wanted to give you a basics of it, show you some of the objects, some of the different math and logic functions. Hopefully it's starting to click, uh, make a little more sense. A lot of you probably won't ever be on the programming side, but it's nice to get a, a sense of it and see where it goes. So again, thanks for watching, leave feedback, uh, comments, let me know. If you like the videos, what else you'd like to see? You guys have been great leave me comments and help me with future videos. Thanks a lot for watching.